Good afternoon, all. CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Thursday afternoon, October 20th. We are looking at Window Traders' market profile of the ES and SPY. I'm telling you, this week has given us some bizarre price movements and market generated information. Bulls had a huge uh, lead early with all the uh, MGI, gave it all up and more. We have an outside day down in SPY and ES as we close below yesterday's low, not by a lot. But right now they have us closing below it. Uh, he, uh, Russell has the worst day of all. They had a double distribution day yesterday. They took it back. Only have another one today. They have single prints in G and H. They also have an outside day down. Q's take out both sides of yesterday's range, but don't have an outside day down. All they have is the day's high and low. We did pro, but didn't get much from it, so I'm not going to even use it. So all we have is a day's high and low in almost a $9 range. Volume only $82 million, though, with a $9 range. So we got within $3 of a balance high, rolled over, got within $0.60 cents or so of a balance low, and couldn't get that. Smack and balance on the daily. Smack and balance on the weekly. Monthly is down. We have an options expiration tomorrow. I had a good day today, and I just, you know, I changed course when I had to. I was long in the morning and flipped to short in the afternoon because the MGI changed. Um, so we started in value, in balance. Buyers rip up in A and B to get value overlap and a higher. We, over, we end with overlap and a lower value. I took, I did nothing in A. I said, A, I expected chop. We got chop. I did well in B, though, on longs to pop A's high, and then again on a pullback to pop yesterday's high. So two nice longs in B. C period started coming in. I was doing the ebb and flow trade. It came in pretty good, and I ended up being long 10 mini. Fortunately, it went back up where I had a pretty damn good trade on it. Didn't hit a home run on it, but did pretty good on it, on that, on that size. Did nothing in C. Now D period started pulling back. I scalped longs a bunch of times before we started the one time frame and before we stopped the one time frame and up. Uh, yeah, so I took longs twice in uh, D, basically against C's low, and I got two to three points out of it each time. Um, actually, three times. Because once it took out C's low, I'm like, nah, I'm going to wait on this. Let's see what they really want to do. And I didn't do anything. I was like, is F... Right? E traded inside. We held singles in D. I still didn't take any longs there. E went inside. Actually, I did take a long in E one time against uh, D's low. And then, uh, which made money. So I, I made money in two, three, six, seven longs I made money on. When F came in, again, F is my lunch period. <laughs> Not much is going to keep me from my lunch. I didn't eat a lot of days on the floor of the exchange when, when it was busy. Um, I was thinking about a long in F. I'm like, well, we're still holding singles. We still have B's low, which at the time looked like a possible lower accepted price. But I just didn't feel right. And I said, nope, I'm going to eat and watch this. And I'm glad I did. F flushed out. I did nothing. I did nothing in G. I did short H because I thought we were going to finally get the IB low. The thing that kept me really out of a long in F is we didn't take out the IB high. That's little nuances. I also said in E period, if we can't get back to yesterday's high, keep an eye on that, right? So those are all little nuances. So I didn't do anything in F for G, but I took an H, a short in H to go take the I below, which worked very nicely. I shorted J period on the ebb and flow trade. I shorted K period on the ebb and flow trade. Just one in all of them. I did miss one trade. I thought it was going to finally pop J and K's high and fill those single prints. And we had the 144 there, the simple moving average. I'm like, that's a decent risk, uh, you know, innovative trade. Didn't pull the trigger. I was, was going to get long around 80. Didn't, popped right up to 86, 87. That's okay. And I didn't do anything in M. So it was a good day. Went from long with the MGI, flipped to short in the afternoon on the MGI. Destinations. All we have is today's high and low. We did probe, but not far enough away from K's low. It's meaningless to use. Today's low is more important. 
So today's high is 372.67 in SPY, and then you have 375.45 daily high. Downside is 364.91, 363.97 daily low, which is the bottom of our balance, and then 356.96 daily low. ES, we have today's high of 48. <coughs> then 77.25 daily high. The downside is today's low of 66.25. 61.50 is the bottom of our balance. And 91.25 is another daily low. And then on the chart, tomorrow night we'll recap all these charts. Just going to show you the daily. Did anything change today? No. Remember what I said? I said it's not yesterday's low we're talking about. It's Monday's low. That's the bottom of our balance. We didn't take it out. So we're in a four-day balance. Outside day down. We took out yesterday's high, closed below yesterday's low. That's technically bearish. We also closed below, well, we're right on the 20-day moving average. We're literally 24 cents below it. So there's a lot happening right where we closed. So bottom line is this. If we can't get back above the 20 and we and the sellers, uh, buyers get rejected, I can't imagine we don't test our Monday low and then see what happens below the balance low. If we get above the 20 and stay above it, well, at least maybe we'd go and test today's high and yesterday's high again. I don't know if we'll go and take those out and get the balance high because that's pretty far away, but we'll see. It is an options expiration tomorrow. I do know this. I would think when we come out of this four-day balance, whichever way it is, we should get some decent tempo one way or the other. Hope you had a good day trading. Thanks for the likes and subscribing. Enjoy your evening, and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.